Hello, hello, Pisces. Welcome to your November 2020 overview reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Pisces. And before we get started, take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already to get more amazing, wonderful, delightful content from me. Make sure that you check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. And if you would like to learn more, if you want to work with me, if you want anything else that your heart could possibly ask for, then go to onyxhealing.com to make your wishes come true and sign up for my newsletter if you would like to get a reading sent to your email every Sunday. Now, let's go ahead and just dive into this. I'm going to lay this spread out, then we will get started. All right, let's start with the Oracle cards. First thing, we have the Warrior. Perseverance, personal power, courage. This is like, what, what are you facing right now that requires courage? And that's what this is a reflection of. It's hold that, embody that. Don't just bail because something feels challenging or is a struggle. Like really, if you're at a pain point, you have to look at if I continue down this path of just doing things the same way I always have, where does that lead me? And where does the new path lead me? And then make your decision from that place with courage in mind. And then we have Fox. This is cleverness. This is curiosity, asking questions. Discovery as well is coming up quite a lot. So be willing to see things in a new light, in a new way, to innovate. Just try a new approach. There's like fool energy in this to me, like jumping off into something new. And then we have expertise. An expert may be required to proceed further. Acknowledge what you've learned. Share what you know. Visit your own inner repository before you seek new studies. So um, I'm also getting like, go back to basics is one thing that might be really helpful to kind of check in with, or I'm also getting that for some of you, there might be like further education or classes or, or mentors. Like there's something about kind of using the people that, that you have around you, the teachers, the mentors, the practitioners as a way to support you in accessing your next level. It's not that we don't have things available to us at all times, but it's also really helpful to have guides who can help us unlock parts of ourselves as well, because we all have blind spots, right? We don't, we don't always have the answers for everything. So I'm just getting that you might be accessing more of this in November. The central energy is the nine of swords. Oh man, this is a beautiful, and I know that all of you are like rolling your eyes at me, <laughs> but it's, it's nice because you have the warrior on the table. It's saying courage is what you need at this time. Like that, that is the thing that will get you into this next space. And I would say if you didn't have like fear getting activated, then you're, you're probably not brushing up against any edges. You're not bursting into a new level if you don't experience the, oh my God, I'm about to burst into a next level, or I'm, I'm about to burst into a next level of healing. There's so much that comes at this point. So you're like at that space of meeting your resistance, meeting your fear, meeting the shadow pieces that normally you might back away from. You might hide in the closet. You might try to shove aside and just go back to the way things were. This is saying you need to bust out all the stops in November. You need to come with courage. You need to challenge yourself in that way. You need to innovate your approach. You need to get curious with doing things in a new way. And also maybe recruiting support for yourself or some type of education, someone who has more of an expertise than you do or who has skills and codes and information that maybe 
maybe you haven't mastered yourself yet. Because the fear, this, the, I love the Nine of Swords because it reminds us that it's an illusion. It is made in the mind. It is not something that you're experiencing now. This is you forecasting mentally something is going to go wrong when that's not the case. It's just that this needs to be challenged, addressed, and worked through. The crossing energy is the Eight of Swords. A further confirmation, you have been creating this, right? You're creating the, I'm, I'm afraid, so I'm going to go paralyzed. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to freeze. And it's like you're, you're formed. You're ready. This isn't a cocoon anymore. It's actually the butterfly is there. It's fully formed. And so you are ready. You are ready for this next level. You're ready for the expansion, however that is. Relationships, money, career, family, who knows? We're, we're always working on different things and we have different pain points and areas that we need to expand into. So it's really time for you to realize that it's, it's safe for you to do so. You are equipped. You have the support. You have the courage, you have the innovation to do so. What you have shifting out is the Hierophant. This is limitations. This is boundaries. So that's moving. This is saying that you've been putting too many restrictions, limitations, conditions on yourself to the point where it's prevented you from expanding. The innovation comes from, well, what if things get to be different? What if I don't actually have to contract? What if all these conditions that I've put on myself aren't actually necessary. And then leaning into that. So this is about breaking down boundaries. It's very interesting because I don't usually get that read for this. So you, you are busting out of the cage that you were in. The oncoming energy is the Father of Cups. This is emotional mastery. So maybe th the contraction, fear, and resistance has been giving you insight. And as you overcome it, you integrate the wisdom on what that really was about and how you can overcome the resistance again or get through the next level or the next um, upper limit that you brush up against because we're we're going to experience another one right it's it's ongoing throughout life and so the father of cups is reminding you that this is something that you're going to fully integrate and then next time you can say oh this is familiar i know what i'm doing i've i've felt this fear i've felt this contraction i've felt the jumping off point where i need to expand and you'll know what to do. You'll have that wisdom available to you. So this is all good things because it's um, also very smooth. The texture of it looks very smooth when I'm reading this. And so you can kind of consider that, that what's on the other side of the uncertainty, the fear, the negative forecasting that your mind and ego wants to do is the energy of, oh, that wasn't so bad. It's not that big of a deal. And that's what you have to look forward to is the come down off of the mental anticipation that you've had is actually relief and ease. Now, these three cards up here is what's happening outside of you. This is your environment, your external world. First thing, ooh, 10 of coins. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We love that. We love the 10 of coins. Okay. And the, oh, stop it. Oh my God. Okay. 10 of cups. Hold on. Hold on. One more. One more. No, no, I can't. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. Do you see? Do you see? Like the money and the fulfillment and the wishes coming true and the dreams coming true and all the good things happening. Do you see this? Do you see all of this? Because it's on the table right now. And all of the, the fear and the contraction, it's like, don't you dare hold yourself back from this. This is your environment. This is like what's, this is reality. What's actually happening in your world. So... Trust me, you, you can fall back into this Nine of Swords if you want. If you really want. You can stay here and you can look 
through that lens of scarcity, fear, shadow, you can stay in that mode as long as you want. So if you're, if you're watching this and you're like, life is hell on earth, I see you, I honor that. And you also have the Ten of Cups, the Ten of Coins, and the Nine of Cups in your environment. So I, I would say that there needs to be an adjustment in your perception and the mental body. Okay? And so this is... I, it's hard for me to even put words to this just because it is such a... This is like a dream combination of cards right here. This is like the happy family, celebration, all good things, joy, love, luck. This is uh, legacy, foundation, abundance, money, money, money. This is the wishes fulfilled dreams coming true. So that, I, it's almost like fantasy. There's an energy of you could potentially perceive this as it's too good to be true. And so I want to let you know right now, write it down on a sticky note and put it all over your home, that it's not too good to be true. Maybe you've just been doing the work. It's not that this is far-fetched or some fantasy or that you need to wait for the other shoe to drop. Maybe you've just been aligning yourself in a way that is working. Maybe you're just getting the damn thing. Maybe it is all unfolding as you've been working towards. And so now it's just that those few mental tweaks that want to interrupt your peace and want to convince you that you're doing something wrong or that your soul isn't right and it kind of wants to grip the wheel from you, that's what the Nine of Swords is trying to do. Right, and so your your job is to train your mind. It's to become a Jedi, right? Get into controlling the mental body as best as you can, keeping it at bay, working on, you know, not not feeding into it and not believing every thought that you have, because we have lots of I mean, the majority of thoughts that we came uh like through the development with our family, if we had a crap family a <laughs> really wounded family, then a lot of the thoughts that we experience are just distortions that we have to reprogram and rewire for ourselves. And so I'm just saying, don't make yourself unavailable for this because you're convinced that your, your mind is right. Change your mind. You can change your mind at any point. So just know that this is like fulfillment on all levels. This is material, this is emotional, this is relational fulfillment and joy. And so just, it, it's like the, the butterfly is saying, hey, you could just fly away if you, if you wanted to, you know, don't hold yourself back. So I, I don't know what else to tell you. This is saying all good things, all good things. You've been aligning with them. So allow them in. Let's look at what's happening internally. This is also your advice. We have the Son of Pentacles. Show up for the work or the endeavor, right? Show up with courage. Show up to the teaching or to the new approach, the new endeavor, whatever you have going on. It's about showing up and, and having a devotion to, you know, maybe experiencing this or being available for it or... Um, transforming enough to the point where you can actually see these things sitting in front of you. And then we have the seven of wands. So this is you trusting yourself. This is your fire. You kind of fanning the flames of your passion and your, um, what, like something that's been coming up a lot is like your soul's mission. What is your soul here to do? And the more you get into alignment with this is what my soul is here to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to show up for the work that my soul is here to do and be in full expression of my soul is what takes you here. If you've never done this before, <laughs> which most of the time we, we don't spend, uh, our early lives, like showing up as an expression of our soul full, fully and completely. Of course, it takes time to get here, right? 
but th this is why there there's that fear of, well, I've never done this before, or I'm not used to things going this well, or I'm not used to things being easy. I'm not used to um, challenging my mind and saying, no, I think you're wrong. I'm going to go for it anyway. But when you experience the peace, the peace and the abundance and the blessings and the goodness that just keeps rolling time and time again, because you can ride this, the, the 10 of cups, the 10 of coins, the nine of cups, all of this gets to be something that you tap into and you drink from this well again and again and again until it becomes second nature. So you are in the process of getting out of the way. Get out of the way, get your mind out of the way, get your fears out of the way, get the contraction out of the way just by like breathing and melting into the resistance, right? Let the, let the resistance melt. Know that this is what's on the other side of the fear. Okay, I'm going to clarify down here with the Son of Pentacles and the uh, Seven of Wands. King of Wands. So mastering your energy. Like, what are you doing with it? What's good for you? I, I want to be really clear with all of you who are watching. Mastering your energy is not about action. Something sure. Yes, of course, we have to like move matter to matter. That's an important part of the process. But what's really happening here is you you needing to understand and, and come into mastery around when I do blah, 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 I feel depleted or burnt out or I'm stressed again. What's triggering that? What do you need to do instead? What makes you feel full? What makes you feel vibrant? What, ma what makes you feel like, oh man, I could do this all day? How do you refuel yourself? What taps you into an abundance of energy? Start exploring what that is. Because if you're, if you're dragging yourself and forcing yourself and like bullying yourself to do things, that's not sustainable. That's a recipe for burnout. So explore how you can make things easier in terms of your energetic management. You guys know I'm big on masculine feminine composition. Explore that. Are you falling too deeply into one or the other? Do you need to recalibrate them? These are just things to consider this month and start looking at and being curious with. But really, if you show up from a soul-aligned place, you're not going to go wrong. If you show up from obligation, guilt, should, 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 that's where you're going to run into trouble. That's what's going to lead to burnout. But if you know that this is what I'm here to do, this is where I shine, this is what feels good to me, and I'm coming from a space of just an extension of feeling good, it will feel easy. It's You're not going to experience um, nearly as much resistance when you come back to that truth. So it, it's interesting because it's like, this is reality. This is actually what's available. This is actually what you can tap into. This is what's on the table in November. You are just shifting the mental body and letting that get out of your way. So big month, big month. Favorite cards are on the table. Okay, let's do a three card pick. So you're welcome to ask a question, ask for guidance, clarity, support, whatever you need. Just tune in if there's a card that's calling to you. And if you need more time, please pause the video. Card number one. We have the four of swords. Take a breather. It's like more, more exertion. Feeling like crap and overexerting yourself and overdoing it is not like making you more receptive to this. Keep that in mind as well. This is stationary. This is stable. This isn't anything that you are, that you need to like work harder for. This is already here. You are just getting out of the way and resting might be one of the ways that you get things out of the way. 
and it, you need to give yourself evidence and data that um, b when you don't overexert, if that's your pattern, that it's it doesn't result in bad things happening. So you need more data on that. Card number two, we have the seven of wands. This is like you are shining. It's the same card that you have here. Vibrance, vitality. It's like, okay, this is this is the sweet spot. This is where I'm feeling my best. This is where I have the most energy. This is what's most in alignment with me. Find that spot. Find that flow. Just be curious with it and it'll it'll serve you and it'll keep you charged. Card number three. We have the moon. Don't, don't think of a lack of vision or um, like knowing exactly what you want or having all the answers. It's like confusion and uncertainty and fogginess is what gives definition to clarity and focus. And it's what provides the contrast for when you feel super, super, super clear. You wouldn't know clarity without this, but you might be experiencing a big fog right now about whatever you're asking about or experiencing. And so don't fight thrash or try to think this. The, like thinking doesn't work on the moon. Forcing doesn't work on the moon. You just kind of have to breathe through it and allow yourself to just be carried through the experience, trusting that clarity clarity will come as you invite it. So don't fight the current of the moon. Allow it to just provide contrast and it temporarily until you either get more information or you discover something, right? You get curious. Maybe you're, you're playing with this fox energy and then things kind of unfold from there. But don't force. Don't like go out trying to hunt for clarity and answers because it's like you're not going to be able to fool the moon. So just kind of ride the wave and know that things will transform. Every day is going to be um, fresh and different and unique. So allow yourself to, um, to take it day by day. Don't push, don't force. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. Make sure you watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of the month ahead. Don't forget to subscribe. Sign up for my newsletter. I have more good things coming, so stay up to date with me. Check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. I am sending you so much love and support. If you would like to work with me or learn more, go to onyxhealing.com, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.